like right now is a good time to start your right now is a good time to preheat your oven If you are a fan of Earth Eats videos, you will know that pie pastry is one of my favorite things to make, and you can find a recipe for it right here. It's a simple all butter pie crust pastry. Always want your pastry to be chilled. That's the best way to get a flaky pie crust is to keep all the ingredients cold, especially the butter. We just put a little dusting of flour on there, put some flour on your rolling pin, First for these, because we're making these little tartlets, we're gonna cut it into thirds. I always think it's a good idea to get a little extra flakiness by folding your pastry a couple of times and then rolling it out. It creates kind of a rough puff, which may not be necessary for these, but it, I always really like a super, a super flaky layered dough. I really love to make these, I love to make galettes, even more than pies, I think. And the reason is because it's not stuck in a pie dish. A lot of the juices from the fruit have a chance to evaporate and it prevents that dreaded soggy bottom that you can often get in a pie. Roll these out and then set them aside and put them back in the fridge. Again, always keeping everything cold. We're gonna do that while we prepare the plums while we prepare the fruit. Plums like peaches and cherries are just some of those classic summer stone fruits. I particularly like using plums, one because I think that the color is really stunning. I like to leave those peels on and just have that bright red and then also they're very tart. We're gonna cover these and put them in the fridge to chill while we prepare the fruit thinly slice them because you're gonna to wanna to arrange them in kind of a decorative pattern. Get as many good slices as you can and then we'll pick the best ones to arrange into our tarts. One trick that I have learned with making galettes is you want to put your dough on the pan that you're going to bake it in before you put the fruit on. They're much easier to deal with that way. It's kind of hard to transfer them because you don't really have a pan to hold them. So. Find what you think might be the center, and then start finding your good looking pieces of fruit and arrange them in a little spiral, floral type thing. I do think with something as pretty as plums, it's worth it to spend a little time. Then we're gonna wanna top it with some brown sugar. You could also use, um, depending on the fruit, you might wanna season it with some, you know, if you're using apples, you might want a cinnamon sugar mixture with these plums. I just feel like the brown sugar works really well flavor-wise. And it's gonna kinda dissolve and disappear. So it looks like I'm covering up everything that I just spent time arranging, but it'll, it'll be fine. Okay, and so now is just the kind of rough folding up that makes the galette. And I find that sometimes I have a little extra pastry and so I might pull some off and get it out of the way so it's not too thick. And then you wanna really try to pinch it together so that it will hold this shape. And some fruits like berries are gonna be, just release a lot of juices when you bake them. That is okay. That is fine. It might smell like it's burning in your oven, but it's, it's really fine. You'll just wanna kind of remove it quickly from the oven. With this one, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna put something in the bottom before I lay the fruit on that will kind of absorb those extra juices. So I've mixed together a little bit of brown sugar, panko breadcrumbs, and some almond flour. There are lots of different things you can use. I've even heard people putting pieces of cake down. I don't usually have pieces of cake laying around <laughs> when I'm making pie, so. And then just a little sugar because these aren't overly sweet because you're really just putting that fruit on top. So each of these looks a little different. I think rustic is the key here. You're not worrying about getting any kind of decorative edge or anything like that. You're just letting the kind of natural folds of the pastry be 
uh, part of the aesthetic. All right, so I'm gonna put these back in the fridge. Right now is a good time to preheat your oven because that way you're not heating up your kitchen while you're working with the dough. So while you've got your pastry chilling in the fridge, you're heating up your oven. These are ready to go in the oven and you don't want to delay. You want to get them in there where they're nice and cold and your oven is nice and hot. So right now I have it at 425 and I'm gonna have it there for 10 minutes, maybe 15, and then I'm gonna drop it down to 375 for the rest of the baking. But for that initial blast of heat, you wanna go ahead and put it in at 425. Oh, it smells so good. Let's go ahead and try it. You can see the way that that sugar really works on the on the crust, it just makes it really nice and crunchy with nice browning. This one definitely stayed in the oven long enough to really get fully baked, nice and crunchy, just like I like it. You can see how nice and flaky and layered that crust is. Let's give it a try. You can see in some places how it sort of opened up a little bit. I think part of that is because of the, the kind of rough puff pastry effect that from that folding that really um, you know expanded a little bit in the oven. I don't mind it at all. As long as the tart kind of stays together, it's fine with me because I really love all those crunchy layers. It's almost like a croissant or something. It's really nice. The tangy plum is really offset by that brown sugar. And you know, I'm not really even noticing that layer underneath of this was, this one had the almond mixture underneath to kind of absorb it. Definitely a nice crunchy bottom underneath, which that worked really well. And that layer is not that noticeable. I'm getting a little of the almond flavor, but it's not like the texture is not really there much. Um, it really just works to absorb those extra juices. So yeah, I think this turned out really great. Thanks for watching. Be sure you are subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any videos. And check out our podcast at eartheats.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.